Hey, welcome back to the table, Buck's Gearbox, and I am super excited about this um, pretty legit unboxing. I've had this um, just for a day now, and I have opened it and played with it, but I haven't carried it or cut with it yet. But this is um, this has been a knife that has been on my list for a very long time. It is the Microtech Stitch, and today I'm going to show you what's in the box. The Microtech Ramlock Manual Stitch. I'm super pumped about this. It's made in the USA. It should be both easier to find than the OG Stitch and will come at a much better price point than the autos and definitely cheaper than a custom version, like a lot cheaper than a custom version of the Borga Blades Stitch. They are amazing. They are very, very expensive for the customs. And this is a team up uh, of Borka Blades and Microtech, Sebastian. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Berenji and Tony Marfione. Uh, very cool collaboration of, again, I've always wanted one of these and I finally have it. This is just the right version for me. It's not super expensive, um, not that it's cheap by any means, but for a made in the USA blade, it is doable. And uh, here is what comes in the box. I wanted to show you all this stuff. Actually, let me show you the script there if you want to read that. Um, I don't know that it's changed much. You can pause those frames and read those things if you would like to. And uh, I don't know, yeah, again, I don't know if it's changed much. I haven't bought a Microtech in a minute, so this is a little bit different than what I've seen before. Oh, sweet, you get a sticker. Didn't know that. Always excited to have stickers. I think I already have one on my table there, yep. And you get uh, some materials here. You can pause and read that. This is a 4K video, so you should be able to zoom in and read that clearly if you want to read it. Again with that as well. Put that off to the side. And this is a product care manual. Welcome to the family. Some iconic knives right there for sure. I really want one of these. So again, you can pause that and read it if you would like. Same for the flip side. And there you go. Now, you know what we all came here for, the knife itself. Caution, sharp edge, right? Little inspection signature there. And let me move this off. Of course, I got the OD green, the fluted G10 version with the apocalyptic finish, which is my favorite uh, Microtech finish for blades that they do. Man, I'm so happy that I have this. It's been a long time coming and I have a stitch. I'm so pumped. Again, I opened this just to check it out. I wanted to see uh, the action and the centering and make sure everything was just perfect because I've been wanting this for so long. I wanted to get a really good one. I think it needs a little breaking in, but many knives do. I just, uh, if you pull back on the ram lock, it is super buttery smooth, but if you're just flicking it open, it yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time probably to, to break in like many knives do. It is a very big knife and that might be, you know, these things may be the only caveats to this for people. It's big, it's kind of heavy, and it's obviously very um, aggressive looking. So it would absolutely freak out some non-knife people. Oh boy, but I love it. I, actually, I absolutely love this design. Uh, they've been very hard to find, and when they are, they've been, you know, pretty pricey. The good news is that this new manual version, which is what I prefer anyway, is just much more down-to-earth as far as a fully American-made production knife goes. For serious collectors, it will be, I think, what I think is a fair price point and should become fairly steadily available. They're really hot right now, of course, along with the MSI, and they're selling out very quickly. But I would imagine that Microtech will be making these very regularly, and I hope that they do, and I think that they will sell well. Let's talk about specs. Eight and a half inches long, very, very tall. I'll do size comparisons in a minute, but it is very similar to the profile of a Manix 2, but even bigger than the Manix 2 is. But again, we'll, we'll do that some more in a minute. I just wanted to see, show you how kind of deep this thing goes. 
3.75 inch blade with three inches of cutting edge due to that large and distinctive uh, and very useful to choke up uh, finger choil. This is made with Bowler M3 90 mk which is a new flavor of m390 that is microtech's thing and is reported to have better edge retention than regular m390 is i don't know really any more than that i haven't even cut with this thing yet i've heard complaints about a suboptimal lower heat treat for m390 so if you care about that you might want to go and check that out i think some of that stuff is just kind of overblown i've never had any issues with any of the knives that i've had that have had quote unquote suboptimal heat treats but I know that we're collectors and we are very picky about these things so just wanted to make that known I've just heard that I've also heard that some of these have had uh have failed the spine whack test um I haven't done that with this one yet your mileage may vary just wanted to make sure that I mentioned it again mine has the OD green fluted g10 scales with partial steel liners um, they're in there, but you probably can't see them on this video very easily. The apocalyptic blade finish, which again is my favorite. I think every Microtech I own has the apocalyptic blade finish. I just think it's such a cool look. Just kind of a broken in, messy. Don't worry if you, don't worry if you scratch it because it's just going to add to the flavor kind of look. I also like that there's less billboarding on the blade, and also the the pocket clip is a little bit smaller and the the, the text is a lot more subtle, which is pretty cool. This thing runs on multi-row bearings. This will be my first multi-row bearing knife that I know of. And uh, one, I imagine once it gets fully broken in, this is going to be one of the smoothest knives in the collection. And uh, it's already very smooth. Like I said, when you pull back on the ram lock all the way, it's butter. But again, I think it's going to get better, which is really cool. 5.8 ounces. This is a beefy heavy pocket knife. There's no getting around that. The ram lock, which is a super stable and robust feeling crossbar lock, similar to what Benchmade has done for years. Um, but it runs on a different spring system. It doesn't run on, on Omega Springs. It's kind of a normal spring setup in there. I'll show you what it looks like when you pull back on the ram lock. There you go. And it runs very nice and smooth. For sure. There are multiple ways to deploy this knife. The fully amb ambidextrous crossbar lock, obviously. Uh, the giant cutout uh, that is very well suited to spidey flicking. You can use your thumb, but I don't find that it's optimal. I either do the spidey flick. Oh, there you can see I failed that one a little bit. But it's, it's so simple to work this version of the crossbar lock. The ram lock is pretty dang awesome so far. I'm really liking it. Tip of only carry, but left hand carry friendly due to the movable pocket clip. So that's pretty cool. So there's a little bit of a, a specs overview of this knife. Let's do some size comparisons. And hey, if you enjoy this, please consider a like and hit the subscribe button. It'll help the channel grow and I'd appreciate that. Also, I have affiliate links in the description as well as a Patreon account. If you want to support me directly, it's up to you and I appreciate it very much. Size comps, here we go. This is the very tiny pair of three uh, in comparison to the Stitch. And there is a PM2, and it actually is pretty similar in length to a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. That's pretty cool. Do, do, do. Next, some big knives that uh, most people are aware of. I already showed you it up next to the Manix 2. Shares a very similar... I mean, it's bigger, but it's very similar to these two. This is the Shaman, and uh, yeah, it's very, very comparable to the Shaman and the Manix profile. Obviously, very different blade shape, but similar in size. Next, some more beefy knives. This is the Spartan Harzi Folder, the full size. Just a little bit bigger than the Stitch. And this is my Hinderer XM18 Skinny. Very comparable to those two blades. Here it is uh, up next to my Omnum Zon which is also a fairly large blade, just a little bit uh, slimmer carry profile than the Stitch. And there you have it. Folks, I am uh, super pumped to have this. I've wanted a Stitch for so long. Thank you, Microtech and Borka Blades for making this more accessible. 
um, to find and to own. I haven't carried it all, as I said, so this is definitely not a review, just an overview, a pseudo unboxing. But if you've wanted a stitch like me and held off, this is definitely an easier on-ramp than what was available before. I'm super happy to have this. I can definitely recommend it if you already know about these and have wanted one for a long time. I haven't had any issues. Uh, of course, again, this is not a review and I haven't carried it much. So we'll see. If I have any issues with it, I will probably do a full review about it. Super happy to have this. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you that has subscribed and has watched my channel. And there will be more to come. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.